I'll give you a little background about the collection and how my journey began. My interest in art began at school when I was about 15 or 16 in a rather accidental way. I was at a strict boarding school and was always looking at ways of going off campus so I could get to the movies, have a good meal and have a bit of freedom. I then came up with this brilliant idea to set up an art magazine as this would allow me to have the legit reason of getting into town on the excuse of visiting the printers. I had no real knowledge of art and as the school didn't have a magazine on the subject, it seemed like a very plausible idea. I needed some content for this and in my naivety thought I'd simply write to the celebrated artists of the day saying that I wanted to interview them and to get them to contribute an article for a school art magazine. To my good luck, most of them obliged. Perhaps they thought the idea was novel. And in the course of this correspondence, my interest got beat. My dubious reasons for setting up the magazine soon turned to something more genuine. The more I worked on the magazine, I be began becoming fascinated by the artists, their works, and found that they had quite an impact on me. I was hungry to learn more, to meet these artists and to see their works in the flesh. With a dearth of museums to my then schoolboy mind, the best way to enjoy them was to buy them whatever was in my modest budget at the time, so I could enjoy them at my leisure. Looking back now, I'm not very sure how proud I would be of those early purchases, but they still do mean something to me and they also mark the beginnings of what would become a lifelong passion and interest. If I think about how my collection really took shape from there on, much of its direction has to do with the people I met along the way. They've guided me either intentionally or by happy accident. I must say I've had the finest teachers right through and in every subject that has caught my fancy. In the talk, I'll introduce you to some of the areas I've been collecting and mention who influenced this, and then I'll go on talking about the plans for the museum that I'm involved in setting up. It doesn't already exist. It's virtual currently, but hope to be in physical space soon. And this uses the collection as its starting point. I count myself lucky that at the time I began collecting, there was much less hype about Indian art, and the market hadn't really taken off. It was easier to meet the artists and to form genuine relationships. Artists and dealers weren't so cautious as the prices also were much less, the value was less. And I hope the artists that I met at the beginning of my journey, such as Manjeet Baba, Ram Kumar, Arpita and Paramjit, Meera Mukherjee, Ganesh Pain, amongst many others, saw me as a young and enthusiastic person who took an interest in what they were doing and wanted to buy their work because of the enjoyment that I was deriving from it. I was eager to learn and I had a natural leaning towards wanting to collect. It became almost like a hobby and without being guided by much other than what I could afford and what appealed to me on some visual and aesthetic level, I began to pick up whatever I could. It's around this time, 1988 to 92, that I think I could begin to call myself a collector. And it was during this period that I think I acquired some of the better works that the collection has. I'll just take you through some images in the modern and contemporary. I'm, I'm sure you know all these artists, so there's no point talking about them. That's currently on loan to the Tate for the Bhupen show. The next significant period in my journey as a collector came out of meeting Dr. Jyotindra Jain and Mr. Martin Singh in the early 90s. Up until then, my interest had been mainly in modern and contemporary art. Dr. Jain and Mapuji opened my eyes to the world of print media, to folk and tribal art, textiles, craft and popular culture. Obviously, these were things I'd enjoyed seeing before as they'd been part of daily life, but I hadn't really considered them as collector's items before. I became hooked, saw the creativity, beauty and history and such 
what's more, much of this kind of material wasn't taken very seriously by institutions and other collectors at that time. And often by definition, a huge amount of it was existing, waiting to be discovered. With low price points, it also became possible to research and still pick up some of the best examples. And I began collecting a fair amount of this. I'm going to take you through some examples of these, as well as craft and design and textiles. The next significant period in my journey as a collector came from meeting and getting to know both Dayanita Singh and Prabhu Das Gupta, who inspired my interest in photography, and this was at the end of the 90s. Discovering their work made me realize how exciting photography could be as a medium. With Prabhu it was just his incredible eye, and I was mesmerized by a lot of his images, and Dayanita showed me how photography could be a very serious artistic medium, not just used for journalism or fashion as I had thought at that time. I began to collect a lot of both their work and also some of their contemporaries who they had introduced me to. One of the first photographs I remember having bought was a Dayanita and she mentioned this was the first sale she had done to an Indian. Um, she also then photographed my family extensively as part of her early portrait series and I've lived with those pictures ever since. In my discussions with Prabhudo, we spoke about how India really had no great venue to see photography and him seeing my interest in the medium encouraged me about setting up such a place. I'm not sure he expected me to take him seriously, but I thought about this idea a lot. And again, it was a bit of an accident and it was something I couldn't get out of my mind. In fact, Prabhudo went on to say, Tasveer was a dream that he had dreamt of, but it was for he articulated the vision and the planning and he found somebody else to put in the money. As I learned more about photography through being involved with Tasveer, I began to build a personal collection too, focusing not only on Indian photographers, but also on international photographers who had made a significant body of work in India. Some of the key people represented in the collection are Bon and Shepard, Kathy Brasson, Mark Ribu, Karen Noor, Ragurai, Jyoti Bhatt, Satyan, to name a few. The Sweet is now over 10 years old and we continue to curate and travel exhibitions around India and abroad and also publish photo books. Just some pictures of photographs. Being involved in Tasveer was the first time I really took on an active role in assisting the production and curation of art. And whilst I would not consider myself a curator, I found the process of getting art out there, of having an insight into how the photographers worked, how a project grew, and how we could promote this and make books, etc., very rewarding. For the first time, my interest in art wasn't just about my collection, but about trying to show other people, other collectors, and the public what amazing talent there is in the arts in India. In many ways, therefore, I think being involved in Tasweep was what first got me thinking about setting up a museum to showcase not only the work of photographers, but all kinds of art forms, using my collection as a starting point. I also wanted to do something free from any commercial considerations, unlike a commercial gallery. At this time, I really didn't know what shape this would take or when it would happen, but I just knew it was something I had wanted to do. It's a well-known fact that India's museum landscape is in urgent need of improvement and modernization. Museums here have been falling behind and failing to provide a decent space for people to learn about and see art, let alone contribute to research and conservation. I wanted to make a museum in Bangalore to try and do what hasn't been done before in that city 
to have a quality space for art with curated shows and run by professionals and designed very much with the public in mind. Whilst this has been something I've wanted to do for many years, it's only really taken shape in the last two years in a serious manner. We now have a strong board and advisory panel in place, as well as a team of arts professionals designing the strategy and practicalities of this project. We are working with some fantastic designers and architects and have been in discussions with museums abroad to look at partnerships and what help we can get from their experiences, be it in collections management, programming, curatorial concerns, outreach, or even marketing and audience building. There's still a very long way to go, but I'm confident things are now taking shape. It's a workable project and the right time for a place like Bangalore. I'll take you through MAP as the acronym for the Museum of Art and Photography and what we are currently involved with. To start with, it's important to mention something about the name and identity of the museum. We decided to call it MAP, which stands for Museum of Art and Photography. Photography very deliberately is in the title, not only because photographs make up a large part of the collection, but also because photography is an area that's been neglected in many Indian museums. Yet it plays such a huge role in art history, and especially in contemporary art. And so we wanted to show that it has an important place here. It's also a much department. Pre-modern art, modern and contemporary art, folk and tribal, photography, textiles, craft and design, and popular art. However, the idea is to both respect these disciplines, but also break away from the kind of strict categorization. Instead, we wanted to map them together and show how they feed into one another, and not to place ideas of high art and popular culture at opposite ends of the spectrum, but as equally important. This will be a job for our curators, but the idea is to make the exhibitions more interesting, more inclusive, and more exciting with, for new audiences, as well as those who don't normally visit museums or have preconceptions on how museums work. We also wanted the branding to be colorful, welcoming, modern and bold, yet Indian, again breaking away from the museum stereotype in India of unwelcoming, dusty old colonial institutions. So that's really the color palette we came up with. We also had a short animation made as to how we came up with the identity. colors that you see have pretty Indian names. It's Firozi for the turquoise, it's Gulabi for the pink, it's Kal for the black and so on. And each one doesn't necessarily relate to one of the six disciplines but they're interchangeable. Until the physical museum launches and also once it's open, MAP's online presence will be a hugely important part of what we plan to do. We've already digitized over 7,000 artworks from the collection and we are in the process of making these freely available online so that in the coming years, anyone from anywhere in the world can look and learn from over 12,000 high-res photographs from the collection, all professionally captioned and catalogued. In addition to our own efforts, we are working closely with the Google Cultural Institute, where we are making some of our own content and collection available to them to promote on their platform. We want collaboration to be at the very, so that's what we've done on the online. There is a website already available, but currently I think there are less than a thousand images on the site. 
and this is just how it works and we wanted collaboration to be at the very heart of what MAP stands for. This means lending our own collection to other museums and exhibitions and also borrowing artworks and full exhibitions as well and exhibiting these at our space once the, uh, the museums open. So far, we've collaborated with various museums and foundations, including the Smith College, the National Gallery of Modern Art, the National Museum of Bahrain, Tate Modern, and even right here at the Piramal Foundation to lend artworks to different shows. We've also worked with a private collection of photographs that was bequeathed to MAP in the form of the Deepak Puri collection to put together a book and a touring exhibition and want to do more in this area in the future, making private collections public. Curating exhibitions from outside our collection will therefore be a big part in what we do. In fact, we are hoping to launch a gallery within the museum exclusively to showcase other private collections. I've been fortunate to get the support of various friends and corporates who wish to be part of MAP and to contribute CSR funds towards it. It's partly for this reason that I've also consciously kept our own family name out of the name of the museum. As in the long run, I want this to be much more than about one person collection and instead a space for looking at all sorts of collections about India, from India, on all sorts of disciplines. So these are different things that we've loaned out. One of the areas we want to put maximum effort in is in trying to build a new audience for art in Bangalore. As in the case elsewhere in India, existing museums and galleries have very small footfalls. And so we are constantly trying to think of new ways to change this <coughs> and realize the effort needs to start right away. We can't expect to simply open the museum and expect people to engage and start visiting. So we've already begun designing outreach and education programs in order to build a relationship with the community and show that this is a project for them, for the people from all walks of life. With this in mind, we've been working closely with an organization called Flow in Delhi to design an exhibition and series of creative inquiry workshops. We curated an exhibition around the idea of representation of animals in art, drawn from the collection, and then invited school children to our current space in Bangalore, which is a gallery that currently only shows the Tasveer uh, photography shows. We've had a few of these workshops already and there's plan to do another 20 such scheduled over the next year and invite children from a wide range of backgrounds. Not only do the children learn about the art that they are seeing, but the idea is that the gallery space becomes less intimidating and something fun and educational too. And also that parents see the value in taking their kids to visit museums. So these are some things that there are different schools who came in and they did a very interesting uh, they, the chart that the lady is holding up was a map of Bangalore where they had put in things like the high court and a traffic signal and other stuff. So after they saw the exhibition, they had to look at the different people who would man these buildings and connect them to different animals. So who would the policeman be, which animal would the judge be and stuff like that, which was interesting for them. In conclusion, the agenda of a private collector is obviously very different from that of a museum geared towards the public. However, if curated properly, I think that private collections can form fantastic starting points for museum. Since thinking about building MAP, my own, own criteria as a collector has also somewhat changed. I still pick up things which take my fancy instinctively, but I'm also increasingly conscious of trying to build a more rounded collection, concentrating on things which I feel are gaps or that which are less represented in other collections in the country. Many of the most significant museums in the world began from private collections. And I think especially in India where the government is unable to provide adequate museums and programs to support the visual arts, it really is going to be up to the private collectors and corporates to become the future of protecting our artistic heritage and setting the groundwork for a much more positive future in the arts. I don't think this means museums should happen in isolation. And I think that it's important that the various new non-governmental initiatives around the country 
keep a good dialogue between each other so that we can all learn and improve the overall quality of museum output over time. On a recent trip to the States where I was meeting with various people from the Smithsonian, I was struck by one of the things a lady working in outreach and education there spoke about. Her motivation is that if she provides an enjoyable, educational and interesting space for art, and if it sparks a lifelong interest in art in even only a few members of the younger generation out of the millions of visitors they have, then they will become the future guardians for art and culture and the next generation of museum professionals in the country. This is a very simple idea and very obvious idea, perhaps, but one which I think is something we don't have in India. I was lucky to have had an early engagement with art which shaped my life and my interests. But, but without museums, thousands of those who don't have another access point to seeing art, except of course those who go to the airport here, could simply never get the chance to engage with what might be their calling. In India, if we don't even have spaces where the younger generation can be inspired, then what hope is there for the museum industry to grow and for visual heritage to be protected and celebrated in the future? I think if MAP can inspire just a few people to take a real interest in art, which might even become a career, then the whole project will be much more than worthwhile. And that is what we're aiming to do. Thank you.